Hey guys and welcome back to another episode of Garage Bouillon and to another episode on my flood damaged Porsche 968. In the previous episode we removed the water pump, we rebuilt the power steering pump which is still sitting nicely in its spot over there and I halted progress because I said I now have to drain the oil because I want to replace the o-rings that sits on the block here and also down here on the oil cooler and I've actually been thinking about it and I'm wondering since this engine is in such good nick I'm wondering if the garage that this car stood in didn't maybe have an open oil pan somewhere and that the oil came with the water and that the oil is actually not even coming from this engine because Everything I clean just looks really good. Um, so it might actually be that this oil that I'm seeing everywhere is just not from this car, but it was from something else. I mean, I can imagine I've got oil standing here in, in, in bottles waiting to be taken for recycling. Maybe the same happened with the previous owner. But he just had it open. Who knows? Anyway, but to be sure, I'm going to replace these O-rings. So that to do that, I need to drain the oil. So that's what I'm going to do now. Once I've done that, I'll replace the oil filter, clean as much as I can again, like always. And then hopefully we can start building up the system again. Except for, actually, I forgot. I'm also doing this seal here, which I already have. So we'll do that. Uh, once I've done that, I think we can start building up again. I'm not promising that I'll get it done in this episode, but we'll get something done. So sit back, relax, and let's start working. Right, we'll just let this drain. I need to invest in those, one of those fancy Porsche oil filter removal systems. But for now, this one will do, eventually. Yes. My battery died so I didn't finish filming taking this out of the car but it's really straightforward as you saw at the top you have this one bolt holding both the lines together and on the bottom of the cooler you just have two on each side very straightforward um, these cleaned up really well um, they're looking really good um, I don't think these were leaking maybe the o-rings were leaking but I still think the oil that I'm seeing on this engine is from something else it doesn't make sense to me that it's got that dirty oil on it so i'm thinking it's old oil that just somehow got onto the engine during the flood but anyway i'm replacing the o-rings these are the four new o-rings they'll be going in now then we'll put these pipes in uh filter on and then put some oil in the car First things first, let's get the o-ring out. Let 
new o-ring. All right, I'm happy with this. Those of you guys who said I should also be looking at replacing the oil cooler seals, let me just show you what's going on up here. As you can see, it's perfectly dry. So I don't see any reason for me to be replacing seals there. The oil slick I had was all in the front here and that's all now been cleaned up. So I think, I think it was the O-rings, but I'm not sure, or it was just oil that was in the garage. Anyway, this is now done. So I'm gonna put the plug back in, get a filter on and then we can get some oil in the car. That'll do. Okay, so the oil lines are in its spot and I have also replaced this seal off camera. I think you've seen me replace enough seals on this engine already. It's the same procedure. Make a little hole, pull it out, put it back in, etc. Clean everything. So that's been done, which means we are now ready to start building up again. And that means putting in the new water pump. And I have it on my bench here. You can see I've already prepared some of it. So this little spout is on there. I have a new thermostat installed with a spacer ring. So this is all ready to go. So the next thing I have to do now is to just flip it over and start installing the gasket. And to install the gasket, I'm gonna use a trick that I learned from a channel called M539. And he used Loctite 5923. This is a marine Loctite, so it never hardens. And that should help me prevent any leakages on this pump. So I'll put the uh, Loctite on the gasket, get the gasket onto the pump. And so, so you basically build a layer on the pump, on the gasket, on the other side of the gasket and the body. And this way you have a very nice seal between the car and the pump. So that's what I'm gonna be doing now. And then we'll put the pump onto the car. <music> With the water pump back in its spot, I just need to start tying up all of these hoses. And as you can see, I also took the um, coolant uh, reservoir off. Uh, the reason for that is it had a lot of uh, calcium buildup inside. Um, I took all kinds of YouTube advice and Instagram advice and Google advice and forum advice. And I have cleaned this as good as I can. As you can see, there's no more scale left inside it. It's actually very clean. Um, it's not white, it's not new, but it's looking really, really good. So this is now going back in. Um, I'll tie up all of the hoses that I need to. And then it's time for us to bring back all of the pulleys and start building up the system a little bit further. for us is to replace this bulb with a new one which I have in the bag over here I didn't have to replace this bulb but I bought it new anyway for in case I sheared off the head so that's now in um, I'm not going to talk it yet because I can't talk it because I haven't got anything to hold on to so I'll talk this down once we have the belts and stuff in place the next thing I need to do is to install this rear uh, plastic backing plate. Once that is in place, we can move on to the balance shaft sprockets and then we can start bringing in the rest of the pulleys and the tensioners. As you can see, this guy is nice and clean and it goes something like this. Uh, I have a couple of bolts that goes into this and then uh, we're good to go again. All 
Right, so I got a little bit carried away because I have very good access to this idle control valve underneath the throttle body. Since I have a lot of things out of the way here, I've got very good access to it. And I want to clean it uh, because this is a thing that can get really dirty and, and, and mucked up. And I realized that this thing got water because it gets water from in front of this butterfly valve. So, or it gets air from the front of this butterfly valve. So this thing had water in it. So I just want to take it out from under here and then we can clean it and make sure it's good as new as well. So this is the guy I took out of the car. This is the idle control valve for the 968. Um, these things are insanely expensive if you have to buy them new. Uh, you're looking at approximately 700 euro. So um, I'm desperately hoping that this is okay. I can tell you guys that it was corroded, it was stuck. Um, but this spent some time in the uh, ultrasonic bath up to there. Um, and that seems to have removed a lot of the scale that was inside there. You can see it's nice and shiny. Let me see if I can get you some focus in there. You can also then see how this valve works. Basically, there's a, a thing that moves at the bottom and it closes up when it's working. I haven't tested this yet, so I don't know if this thing is dead or not. I really hope it's not because even finding them secondhand is tough. Um, so there's a testing procedure. There are three pins at the back. What we need to do is we need to put a ground on the middle pin and the two outer pins are, the, are positives. Uh, and the way it works, if I feed positive to the one, it opens. And if I feed positive to the other one, it closes. So we should be able to mimic the opening and the closing of this valve by just using my uh, tester. Now that I've got the ground on the middle post, you can see that the valve is closed. I'll give it a positive feed to make a double sure. Yeah, it's closed. And if we put a feed onto the bottom pillar, it should open it. And there it goes, it opens it. Right, that's some good news. So this guy is not dead, it's still alive, which is one of the very few electrical components that survived this flood. Um, I'm just going to put some PTFE lubricant in here to make sure it stays this way, and then we'll put it back into the car. So the next thing for us to do is to start bringing back the balance shaft sprockets. Um, again, remember that the top balance shaft sprocket has the zero in the circle, like you see here. Um, now it's just a matter of aligning the woodruff key and the slot. So it's that way. And we should be able to get it on. Let's just pull out the bolt. But that's the way it should go on. Yes. Now we put this little sticky outy bit into that slot and you can now see that the cover is lining up with zero and then we just bring in this bolt again. Guys if you don't have this little book, um, there's a book like this on every Porsche model. Uh, I recommend you get it because you could rely on the internet, but this guy is very good. It gives you all the torque specs that I need for the front of this engine. And as you can see, this is the sprocket on balance shaft. It has to go 45 Newton meters or 33 pound feet. So that's what I'm going to do now. Um, get yourself this book. They're like 30 bucks, 40 bucks, something like that. I've had these forever, uh, but they're really, really good. And they have all kinds of stuff in there about how the timing works, how all kinds of things work. So. Good investment, better than the internet, I promise you. All right, bring on the Porsche special tool. Like that. And this guy in there, like that. There we go. And let's get them dropped down. Done. Now we do the next one. So for the bottom balance of sprocket, remember the zero has to be inside the square slot for your alignment purposes. So let's get this guy on and then we'll do the rest. Yeah. 
the next thing to go in is this guide plate that sits underneath the crankshaft pulley. This is for the um, timing belt. Uh, it has to go in first because otherwise there's no way you get it back in. It has a peculiar set of screws, one long one, another medium one, and then two Allen head bolts. This Allen head bolt stripped when I took it apart last time. I probably spent a good five, six hours getting it out. I was hoping I could find a better solution, but it looks like Porsche found the best one, and that is an Allen head bolt because there's no way to get tools in here. So I guess we'll be putting back the same thing. Um, hopefully I won't fight it again next time. All right, started by putting in this long bolt. Just getting some copper slip on these bolts because um, they were quite badly corroded. Yeah. Okay, cool. Now we move on to all of these idler pulleys. Okay, so you guys were probably telling me this while you're watching and I just couldn't hear you because uh, you're in the future. But I uh, went too far. So this guide plate here, I've taken off this pulley as well and I've taken off the tensioner arm again uh, because I need to be able to snake the belt through here and it doesn't snake with all these things in its spot. So I'm going to get the belt, we're going to get it in and then we'll put those components back again. I might have to adjust it a little bit later. That's the timing belt in its position, like that. Just gonna fight against the compression of the valve springs a little bit here. About that much. That should be it. All right, let's keep that there. Right, so that's the timing belt in its spot. I made a couple of sequencing errors. That's just because it was almost a year since I took this apart. And obviously the way I just did it makes a lot more sense. You get the belt on, then you get the tensioner on. Very logical, I just didn't think about it. But uh, now you know, do it that way. First the belt, then the tensioner. Um, this idler pulley you could have left in. I don't think it makes much difference. I just wanted to create a bit of room. I'm not going to do the balance belt yet because what I want to do now is triple check my cam timing because as you guys remember I did the Vario cam mechanism and new chains and all those things so that needs to be checked but that's not going to happen in this episode because that's a whole different story altogether but for now I'd like to thank you for watching and supporting my channel and we'll continue next time and try to complete 
this belt service. So, goodbye. Thank you.